when you see that, when the binomial is the same, you know you're doing it right. Okay? So let's just simplify this a little bit. I have plus minus 1. We know the negative sign wins. Okay. Now let's take out that binomial common factor. Take out the 3x minus 1. And what I'm left with is a 2x minus 1. 2x and minus 1 after I've taken out that 3x minus 1. Okay, so there are my two factors. Good. And once again, you could expand these factors using the FOIL method just to make sure that you got that you did it properly, and you should get your your original polynomial here. Okay. Okay. Let's do another one here. Okay. This one is in here just to remind us that we have to always check for a common factor first. Okay. Before we do anything, check and see if there's a common factor that can be removed. Okay. So when you look at this equation here, 16x squared plus 26x minus 12, okay, you'll know, first of all, you'll notice these are all even numbers, okay? So we can definitely take out a 2, okay? Um, our a value isn't 1, okay? Um, but we can factor out a 2, okay? We can factor out a 2, and that will leave us with 8x squared plus 13x minus 6. Okay, so that leaves us with a quadratic expression with an a value not of 1, and we can't factor it out any further. So we have to use that long method that we learned today. Okay, so we need to find integers whose product is 8 times negative 6, so whose product is negative 48, and whose sum is positive 13. Okay, we need a negative product, so that means of our two factors, one of them has to be negative. Okay. So the two factors that we're going to use are 16 and negative 3. Okay? 16 plus negative 3 is 13, but 16 times negative 3 is negative 48. Okay, so they satisfy that product. So we're going to break up um, our 13x into 16x and negative 3x. Okay, because 16x minus 3x gives us um, gives us our, our 13x here. Okay, 16x minus 3x gives us that 13x. It's equivalent, so we're going to break it up into that. You get 16 times negative 3 is negative 48, and 16 plus negative 3 is 13, which is our b value. Okay, good. So if we go ahead and break it up, okay. Remember we have 2. Don't forget we factor with that 2, so that's going to stay in front this whole time. Okay. 2 times 8x squared plus 16x minus 3x minus 6. Okay. Now I'm going to use factoring by grouping. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of brackets going on here just so I remember that that 2 is out front. So I'm going to put the 8x squared and the 16x together. Okay. 8x squared plus 16x. Okay, I could take out an 8x from those two. Now I'm going to put the negative 3x and the negative 6 together. So I could take out a negative 3 from those two. Okay. And I remembered that I always separate my groups with an addition sign to keep it equivalent. Okay. I'm going to take out an 8x from the first group, and that leaves me with an x plus 2. And I'm going to take out a negative 3 from that second group, and that leaves me with an x plus 2 as well. Do a little simplification. I'm left with 8x, x plus 2, plus minus 3, which is just minus 3, times x plus 2. Oh, I forgot, I closed my bracket there. Okay. Now do my binomial common factoring. I'm left with 2 times I take out an x plus 2, and I'm left with an 8x minus 3. So I took out my binomial common factor of x plus 2, and I was left with 8x minus 3. Okay. So my final answer is 2 times, oops, 2 times x plus 2 times, oh, where did that, Oh, there we go. Times 8x minus 3. 
Okay, so that's my final answer. 2 times x plus 2 times 8x minus 3. Those are my factors. Okay? So, um, last example we're going to do, factoring trinomials with two variables. Okay? So this has an x and a y involved. So all you have to do is follow the same steps. Don't let it get you scared. Okay? So I need to find two integers who, whose product is a times c. So whose product is negative 40 and whose sum is b, which is negative 3. Okay? So the, num the two numbers I'm going to use are negative 8 and 5. Negative 8 times 5 is negative 40. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. So I'm going to break up negative 3xy into negative 8xy plus 5xy. Okay? Negative 8xy plus 5xy is negative 3xy. I should have said at the beginning here, just make sure that there's no common factor we can take out. There's no common factor we can take out, okay? So we have to use the long way um, to factor this. So we found um, two factors whose product was negative 40 and sum was negative 3, and that was negative 8 and 5. And then we broke up that middle term into negative 8xy plus 5xy, okay? So we're going to factor by grouping our 10x squared minus 8xy plus 5xy minus 4y squared. Okay, now we're just going to factor this by grouping. Put them into groups that have common factors. Okay, 10x squared minus 8xy. Those terms we could take out... Oh, I forgot my x there. With these two terms, I could take out a 2x. Okay. And I'm going to group together my 5xy and my negative 4y squared. With these two terms, I could take out a y. Okay, so this should work. Let's take out a 2x. And I'm left with 5x minus 4y. Okay. And with this one, I can take out a y. So I'll take out a y. And I'm left with is 5x minus 4y. And perfect, that worked. We have common binomials. Okay, a 5x minus 4y with both terms, we can common factor out. We take out the 5x minus 4y. We are left with a 2x plus y. We're left with 2x plus y. Okay, so those are our factors. If we expand this using FOIL, we should be right back to our original. Okay, you can check it if you want. Okay, this last one, I just want you to try on your own without me going through it with you. Okay, um, what you should get with this one is, oh, pause it right here. Okay, and um, try it on your own. Okay, now now that you've unpaused it, okay, we have five times x plus two times two x minus one. This is what you should have. Okay. Make sure you have this 5 out front because you should have noticed. Okay, remember your first step, look to see if there's a common factor that can be divided out. You should notice right off the bat you can take out a 5. Okay? And then from there, you would be common factor, you would not common factoring, you would be factoring this, the 2x squared plus 3x minus 2, using these steps. Okay? And remember that 5 has to stay out front. Okay? So this should be the answer you got. Hopefully you got that. If you didn't get it right, go back and try it again and again until you can get this answer. Okay? After you're able to do that, you can... Um, oh, we have one more example, okay? Before we move on to the homework here, okay? Last example. So, this is just a word problem here. The area of a rectangular parking lot is represented by A equals 6x squared minus 19x minus 7. Okay? So, what we need to do, okay? is we need to, um, it's asking us to factor the expression, to find expressions for the length and the width, okay? And then if x represents 50 meters, what are the length and width of the parking lot, okay? So in order to factor this, we'll do part A. In order to factor this, okay, let's look at the A value. It's not 1, and it can't be factored out, so we have to use the long method that we learned today, okay? So we need to find um, factors who give us multiply to give us 
6 times negative 7 would multiply to give us negative 42. Okay? So we need to find that. And also add to give us negative 19. Okay? So we need to find factors that multiply to give 6 times negative 7, which is negative 42, and add to give us our b value, which is negative 19. Okay? And you'll notice that those factors are um, negative 21 and positive 2. So we're going to break up negative 19x into, we're going to break it up into negative 21x plus 2x. Okay, negative 21x plus 2x is negative 19x. Negative 21 times 2 is negative 42. Negative 21 plus 2 is negative 19. Okay? If we go ahead and break the, break it up into that. So we're going to have, so our area is equal to 6x squared minus 19x. Oh, what we're breaking up that 19x. Sorry. So we broke up that 19x into negative 21x plus 2x minus 7. Okay. Now we're going to factor this by group by grouping. Okay. So I'm going to take this here and I'm going to factor it by grouping. So I'm going to factor this by grouping. I need to put it put this expression into groups that have common factors. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the 6x squared and the 2x together. Okay, so they have common factor of 2x. And I'm going to put the negative 21x and the negative 7 together because I can common factor out a negative 7. And I, I separated them with an addition sign. We have to remember to always do that. Okay. So if I take out a 2x from this one, I'm left with 3x plus 1. Okay. And take out a negative 7 from this one. And I'm left with um, 3x plus 1. Okay, And once again, you'll notice I have a common binomial that I can factor out. Factor that out. And what I'm left with is 3x plus 1. I took that out. And what I'm left with is a 2x minus 7. The plus and the minus together go to a minus. Okay, So there's my answer to, the, to part A. So um, that's the expressions for my length and my width. My length, 3x plus 1. My width is 2x minus 7. Now I want to do part D. If x is 15, what are the length and width of the parking lot? Okay, so I plug in 15 for x. So we can do this on the same page here. So part B, if x equals 15, okay, then my area equals... 3 times 15, which is 45, plus 1, times 2 times 15, which is 30, minus 7. Okay, so then my area is equal to 46 times 23. Okay, so then at this point, I'm going to need to get my calculator out and do this quickly. Okay, so I've got my calculator out now. So I'm just going to do 46 times 23, and that'll give me my area. And there's my area. My area is 1,058. And did it tell us our units in our question? Meters, okay? So our area is 1,058 meters squared. Good. So we were able to factor an expression um, to get the factors that represent the length and the width. And then it told us that x is 15, and we were able to figure out what the exact area was. Okay. If we plugged 15 into our original equation, it should give us the same answer. Okay. Try this homework. Other than that, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. And see ya.